Watch TV, promoting sustainable development. Evening to you all and welcome to tonight's episode. Tonight, we are continuing our discussion on youth entrepreneurship, but we are taking a twist to agribusiness. And I have here with me two people from the agribusiness industry, whom I will introduce to you very soon. But before then, I'd like to urge you to please subscribe to all our social media channels, yes, at Watch TV channel. And this program is sponsored by CENVAST, Center for Volunteerism and Social Transformation. So I have here with me the founder and chairman of B. Bovet Group of Companies, yes, and he is in the person of Mr. Issa Wadrago. Am I right with that? Okay, you are welcome, sir. Thank you. And the next person here with me is Ambassador Kofi Dosa. And he is also from the Dosa and Dosa Farms. The founder, right? Yeah, my wife is the CEO. Okay. And I okay. With her. okay. You are warmly welcome, sir. Thanks. So, for um, the past couple of weeks, we've actually been talking about youth and entrepreneurship and innovation. And tonight, we want to go a bit into the agri business. I think I'll start with Mr. Doza. Okay. <laughs> so I'd like you to tell us about yourself and about Doza and Doza Farms, what you do. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, starting with me, this is my big man, it's my <laughs> big brother, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Isa Rodrigo is a big man in, in, the, in the whole industry. I mean, I have known him for a long time and Honestly, I'm happy to be on set with him. Okay. I have to tell him that. And uh, I'm sure I'll pick a lot of experiences <laughs> from him as well. Um, Dosa and Dosa Farms. My, I, I am an ambassador, uh, Kofi Dosa. Okay. Uh, I used to be known as Amenson Akwa. Amenson Akwa. Uh, Akwa Kofi, yeah. But now I thought, yes, I still serve. Uh, the Akwa means serving, so servant. Uh, but I've uh, I've gone being called a servant, so um, I'm I'm in son this year. Yeah, so I'm you know royal, but I keep serving. Okay. Um, you know, public. I'm the one and only public servant who is not on public uh, the government's payroll, uh, so that is me. Okay. Um, when you come to do so and do so farms, we are headquartered at uh, Racecourse, and uh, we are also partnering with another friend of mine at Tia Bene. We are into poultry, uh, we do some fishery, piggery, and some rabbits. And we have some goods around though, yeah. But uh, I want to focus on my poultry okay. uh, today for very special reasons, mm -hmm. because of the focus I have taken. Um, we are doing both chicken and, uh, you know, eggs, and uh, I have taken to um, doing my poultry without any antimicrobial drugs. Uh, we don't give any form of drugs to, uh, you know, my birds. Uh, and um, we, 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 we go natural, okay. you know, with leaves, um, yogurt, you know, all those things. Uh, to, so, and uh, at the end of the day, you know, it, it's, it sells and it, it's good. Because at the end of the day, if one goes to the hospital and then he's told that, yeah, you'll be given these drugs, these antibiotics, go try them. If it doesn't work, come back for a change. I mean, what is happening? It's, I think, a very serious uh, matter. And that is why, you know, I focused on this. Okay. Uh, whatever we eat stays in us, the antimicrobial, you know, drugs. So uh, I've been able, I've not been certified yet, but I've sent my you know, uh, chicken to the Standards Board Authority and just, I think last week they sent me a report and it's been proven that I have no, not, no trace okay. of antimicrobial um, drugs in my, uh, you know, poultry. Uh, we great. plant popo, scent leaves, uh, bitter leaves, um, and what have you, um, dandelion, and these are things we give to you know, our beds, we use the droppings okay. to, you know, plant them. And uh, I mean, these are uh, just small, small things that we do. So okay. at the end of the day, we either sell the fowls live or, 
you know, dressed yeah. or, you know, you get them in, in parts, okay. you know. And then when it comes to the eggs, to, you know, you have it, our eggs have very long shelves. Life and that is Dusa and Dusa Farms for you. You oh. can get us on the WhatsApp okay. uh, number zero two four four nine three nine seven seven six. Okay, and uh, that's us. And how long have you been doing it? How long have you been in this um, The truth is, uh, I haven't gone into poultry um, over twenty years ago, but oh, wow. we've not done it continuously. Okay. Yeah, we 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 broke off at a point. But for now, what we are doing, I think we've been in it for some mm, four, three, four years okay. continuously. And we've been working at what I've talked about okay. to attempt to do without antimicrobial drugs. Okay. Yes, for continuously. And I think it's a Sussex story. Okay. Mm. All right. Um, so, Mr. Isa, how, how, how did you start it? And how long have you been in this? Oh, how long? Yeah, thank you for the question. <laughs> uh, how long? I've been doing this since 2010. 2010, okay. Um, but the idea was born somewhere, I think, um, 25 or 30 years ago. Um, I came into farming, well, let me put it to any African born in a village is somewhere one or the other yeah, farmer. farmer yeah. Yeah. But from home, as we say in Germany, or from where I learn, um, I'm an IT person from home. Okay. Everything I did is IT. First degree, second degree, and about six or seven other industrial certification in IT. So IT is actually my profession. Okay. Um, I came into farming because I realized that I could do something with IT. Uh, from I've been, I was fortunate to work with international organizations attending global meetings on food security, okay. climate change, um, agroforestry, and I realized that um, that is the way to go. Okay. And I was always thinking, how can I combine my IT to, to be part of the growth or the future that is before us? Because the food industry is actually in till trillion dollars, they say. Okay. Probably we'll have to say trillion cities because <laughs> the dollar is now going down. <laughs> and um, everywhere in the people will tell you, Africans have the opportunity to tap into this. And it is true. Mm -hmm. Even in Ghana, we, could, we, we keep on saying that our oh, agriculture is a cornerstone of our economy, blah, blah, blah. But we do basically nothing. Mm -hmm. So this was, some of the, this was some of the things that were actually with me when I was active in IT and I decided to, at some point I decided to say, look, um, I'll stop and start something that I can use IT mm -hmm. to create something that uh, youth of today will know that, look, it's the future, we can all go into it. Yeah. Because if when you do that, you are not only ensuring yourself full security, we can actually feed the world if we do it right. Yeah. So that's how I got into it. Okay. Mm. So what does um, be both it um, be above it, as I said, it's also it's in line with what I plan to do. Okay. Uh, before I did be above it, you, it's funny, I travel around the world. Okay. Uh, so for me, I call it like a pathfinder. Mm. Because, you see, when you happen to be in the situation I was or I have been, you attend global meetings on climate change, food security, and people talk about processes, uh, policies and all that, and then you say, hey, look, I was born in a village, yeah. I know what is going on, and you're talking about all this big English and nothing is really happening. It hurts, mm -hmm. you know, so I decided to come home and then do something that will be actually, I'll, let me put it this way, is that after some time I realized that we needed African solutions to global issues. We should not wait until they bring solutions that has worked over there to us. But we, should, we know our people, we know our families, we know how they react, what they eat. Okay. So you can't bring a solution to a particular problem in America to Ghanaians. Yeah. We should get a local solution. And that is why I came down, I gave up my job and decided to do exactly that. So in in the beginning, people did not understand what I was doing. If you're a banker and I came to you for money, you won't give it to me because it made no sense. Mm -hmm. I, I was setting up a factory. I had an alternative livelihood center. I opened an ICT center for farmers. I had 
guinea fowls from from Belgium, geese, horses, mm -hmm. um, what they call it, donkeys, guinea uh, grass cutter, okay. um, cattle, goat sheep. People don't understand what I was doing, but I use that to set the pace. And as I'm talking to you, I've had about 15,000 school children and farmers trained. Wow. So when I got into the middle and people started thinking, oh, okay, that's it. And that is exactly what I want to do, to right. let school kids know that, look, I'm an IT professional. I can sit here with my, I can go to the farm with my uh, tab, yeah. get things done, and so eat the best of food. Okay? Like you see, I'm doing everything organic. Mm -hmm. And I know what organic food is to many people in Europe and America, I mean, in Europe and East America. Um, the rich over there are looking for organic. But they are the same people who are giving us the chemical food. So one or the other, I wanted to talk about, look, you have it all. Mm -hmm. Start with yourself. Eat good. And then you can sell to the others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So now let's look at the youth now. Mm -hmm. How do you see the interest of the youth in agribusiness? Um, it's 50-50. Okay. Um, I, the experience is that many youth, especially those from the university, mm -hmm. they get excited. But the moment they get out, they realize, oh, it's like you know, the dead, dead on arrival, mm -hmm. you know, the dream. The chances to be there and to do things themselves, they don't see. So they end up joining the trail or the system to, to be able to survive. Yeah. Though Africa is, was, is, and will still be, at least for the next 10 years, the con I mean, the food basket of the world, if we do it right. Mm. It is. We can. But if we go the way we are going right, now, unfortunately, we may miss this train as well. We we'll miss the chase of industrialization which now the Indians are picking up more than we do. The Koreans, we started with all of them. Malaysians are ahead of us. But this time, if we mess up, we also miss the chance of producing for the world. Yeah. That is my feeling. So the chances for, for youth in agriculture is there. Only that our, our government, our leadership should I think if you ask me, I'll ask Ghanaians to take three days holiday, thinking of the way forward with agriculture <laughs> with this, honestly. We need to sit down, be serious, and find the policies that will mm -hmm. be consistent follow and get you to understand that this is the way today, it is the way tomorrow, and the way after tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But, um, Mr. Dosa, don't do you think, let me say, don't you think um, probably the youth now do not really want to go into agribusiness, or we don't see most of the youth there because of the mentality we have? Because, I mean, when I in SHS, we kind of felt like, Studying agriculture means you're going to be a farmer, just mm -hmm. going to be weeding and then all of mm -hmm. that. So don't you think it's part of the reasons and that we've not had enough education about this agribusiness thing? Well, you're right, and thanks for taking me even to um, that direction. Mm -hmm. You see, we have not branded agriculture well. Mm -hmm. It has not been branded well at all. And so when one is a farmer, one is even, I mean, one feels shy to even say, yeah. I'm a farmer. And that, I think, is very, very, very absurd. Um, farming in itself is adding value. You add value to, you know, it's even in, so interesting to see, you know, as a, a poultry farmer buying a day old chick, see the chick grow by the day, gets to maturity yeah. and starts laying and you know you make money out of your eggs and uh, it's it's a joy yeah. but we have not packaged it well because we have not packaged it well it is not attractive to the youth now uh, that is one side of it we can expand so much on you know the branding of uh, farming apart from that the youth coming out from school straight away and immediately be thinking of mm, pouncing on some cash mm -hmm. i mean making money yes. because of their dreams they need to you know buy a car you know get married you know all those things and all of a sudden they, they see that it's not there mm -hmm. and farming is not that sort of thing where you, you you enter immediately and the money starts flowing you need to incubate you get into it yeah. slowly you understand what you are doing you do it well mm -hmm. then you reap the fruits. Okay. So if these processes are, you know, understood well, 
In fact, it is better than a whole lot of things. People get into the white collar jobs and they really see that the satisfaction is not there. Mm -hmm. So they need to do this farming yeah. somewhere slowly. And when they leave the white collar job, they end up becoming the farmer they didn't want to become. Mm -hmm. So why don't you get into it? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And it's, uh, it, the, the fact is, it's, it's not cheap to start with. And um, yes, because it's lucrative. Yeah. People see that it's lucrative and when they enter, they want to also start making the big money at mm -hmm. once. And it's not like that. You do not have the experience. Yeah, you do not even understand what you are doing well. Maybe you've read and um, books and all that. It's not like that. You need to get to the field, you know, buckle your shoes, your boots, roll your sleeves, get make I mean, make yourself dirty. Yes. Understand what is going on and then when you sit down and you know, start reaping, I mean seeing your your sweat grow. Start reaping. That is when, you know, uh, we, we, we start actually enjoying, Enjoy. yes, the, the fruits of your labor. Yes, it doesn't end there, though. Uh, but uh, as, as we, 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 we move on, maybe we'll get there. Because at the end of the day, um, if, if you go into the factors of production, yeah. you need land, you need labor, you need capital, yes. and then the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Now, if that is what you need, and you are there as the entrepreneur, the, the, the three, how are you going to start? Do you have land? You don't. That doesn't mean you cannot produce. You need to start from somewhere. First, get to somebody. Mentor, let somebody mentor you. you. Yeah. Somebody who has land. Let the person see your interest. You might not know. The person might even say, because the, of the way you are gingered up, for, for the job. Let me even give you just a small portion of my piece of land. Start. That's Let's nice. see what you can do. Yes. Um, these are ways you can start. Your parents, your, your family members might have land somewhere. So it, looking at your interest, when you've been able to build yourself up, then you get that one factor of production, which is the land. Okay. Very, very important. Oh. You need it. And then when it comes to the capital end, People have money, yes, but nobody wants to throw his money yeah, into, yes. in, into the air. So you have to prove yourself. What is it that you want to do? Prove yourself. Do you really understand what you are doing? Can you really talk about it the way it is? Yes. When I ask you, okay, you want to go into poetry. I have, uh, let's say, 1,000 beds. I mean, how will you go about it? You start stammering all over. It means you don't even understand. Nobody will give you yeah. money. So these are things the youth need to understand, understudy, master themselves up before they can actually reap the fruits of their labor. labor. Wow. Mr. Isa, how was it like when you started? Any challenges you faced and then... Yeah. How you were able to... Yeah, starting. To touch on what he said. Yes, yes. Um, you see, when we talk about agriculture, it's about ourselves yes, to ensure that we eat, we get something to eat. Okay. And then you come into the agro business where you do business. And so, okay. first of all, agriculture is about food security. That is why. So, in our own life, sustenance, so we need to take agriculture serious. That's what we need to raise about. Okay. If it's about agro business, and we also know very well we have the potential to make money out of to do business out of it when it's like that we just have to stop making noise we should stop making noise africans as a whole and then see what are the things that we should do we must do because in any case god has already given us half have solved half of our problem yeah. and that is we have enough arable land we thank God so it rains, mm -hmm. and if not, we still have means of creating dams and all that. So these are the things, it's God-given. Yeah. If it's God-given, what else or what next should we do to tap into? We, we know we have land, we know we have water, mm -hmm. we know it is the future. So all things are given. Now we need the human resources, which we do have. We, do, we have even in abundance. Yeah. So we have to think and create a system that works. We have to define and understand very well what is sustainability. 
and what are we trying to achieve? If the youth are to come into our grid, how are we going to maintain them? How are they going to find interest in it? How are they going to leave themselves equally like their colleagues in banks and elsewhere yeah. and still be proud of it? I mean, just give you an example. I'm not brother. At times in the morning, I uh, take pie, um, popo, tangerine, make, I mean, when I do this, I do morning breakfast. I'll just, not that I like using Facebook, but I'll just tell them, I mean, the village and still eating. Yeah. That's how the youth must be made to understand. You still eat healthy and make money. But that system must be created yeah. because we already have what you know, God gave him that the land. So the systems are not working. We are not have creating the system. The so-called empowerment that our politicians keep on saying, they, are not, they don't mean it. What is empowerment? What is sustainability? Our elders should sit and say, look, here we are. So let's create a situation that children will find, will find sense in agriculture and will love it. Kwame Nkrumah started it with the CMB scholarships everywhere. Yeah. I've met people who are PhD holders and they wish they had maintained their father's land mm -hmm. or farms. You see, that is where we are heading. So all I'm trying to say, if we're talking about youth, it's not too late. Let's really mean business when we talk about empowerment, okay. when we talk about sustainability. Give them the means. So let's, right now, look, I, I started something here. When I came, I looked for a fund, mm -hmm. European um, World Bank fund to create, uh, to establish um, what they call a warehouse, a big warehouse. Okay. The idea was when I came, I came in around 2005, 2006, that's when they said they found gold and they were doing a lot of um, campaign for local content bill. And yeah. I'm like, hey guys, you are doing a lot for the local content bill, but we are not doing anything to take advantage of the local content bill. So I, as I applied for a loan through the World Bank, F F we had 2.85 million that we should have built a warehouse here. The idea was if we're able to create the vegetable warehouse here, we can get about four to 5,000 kids or people farming, store them, and we can feed f the oil companies from Gabon. You know they are in Gabon, the same companies that are here, they're also in Gabon, they're in Cameroon, they're in Guinea Equatorial, they're in Nigeria, they're in Ghana, they're in Cote d'Ivoire up to Mauritania. Yeah. And if you can tell them that you are producing organic or good vegetables from Ghana, you can have them yeah. sourced. And that is an example telling you, hey, Charlie, you still have market. People are buying. People will rush to buy. Okay. So it, you've created a way. So they know when they go there, they will get market for what they do. Okay. And so government has to start something and then let people know. Do you know what happened to that fund? Okay. Well, I'm on the TV, but I want to say it. <laughs> They chopped it. <laughs> I mean, if the word, yeah. <laughs> you see. So, they, and if you do that, why are you empowering the kids? So, on that basis, if you don't mean business, create, you know, things that will empower the youth. Will yeah. first of all attract them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, we have had situations where I told you I have donkeys, yes. horses. You ask, why am I having a horse in a farm? The kids will come, they will write all these things, and they will see sense in, in for example, when we ask kids, I mean, about 10 or 15 kindergartens have visited the place. If okay. you ask the kids, if you grow up, you want to do this, you have about, all of them will raise their hand, but as you go further, you see that the hands will go, sure, these are yes. children. Okay. But what I'm trying to say is, if we mean this, the opportunities are there. Mm -hmm. We know the future is ours, okay. but we have to put out some steps like the uh, what they call ukraine russia or war yeah. look at the grains this is something africans Ghanaians could have taken advantage of and there are more of these issues to happen again mm -hmm. are we preparing for such instance no even if they don't happen god forbid that it doesn't happen we're still going to eat anyway yes. and people will eat good food they want to eat good food so what are we doing now and these are the things we need to do to get the youth to understand. But before they understand, create the way. Let them say, there is a way. He's doing okay. poetry. Oh, what are the markets for? If you ten, send three people to him, and after one year, the master and they go out and they also go into poetry, they okay. get the means yeah. to go into. Who is buying them? These are the things we need to think about okay. and so that we can entice the youth and get them to be attracted of them, know that they can use their tab and be somewhere like with you somewhere in the evening. Hey, Charlie, you share our head. He's yeah. coming, he's a farmer, you mm -hmm. are 
present uh, somebody from the bank, hey, you are happy. And that's how life is. And that's how we should plan and make it happen. I insist on that because we have what it takes to do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. OK. Mm -hmm. right, thank you very much. And um, before you answer, mm -hmm. um, before you help us with the challenges and then how you oh, working yeah, with yes, let's you. take a short break. Okay. And I would like to remind you, please, subscribe to all our social media pages at Watch TV channel. And this program is sponsored by the Center for Volunteerism and Social Transformation, SENVAST. Uh, Mr. Isa was going to do us the favor of highlighting some of the challenges that he faced when he started his agro, uh, his agri business, sorry. So, Mr. Isa, can you still help us with that? Yes, sure. um, yes thank you for that question. Um, in our situation currently, you see, we've accumulated a lot of problems okay. that it has made the, all the challenges actually okay. big. But nevertheless, we still have the opportunity to do good and yeah. to you know, ratify the situation. Um, I always describe our situation like we Ghanaians, we are here. Mm -hmm. You see, we, we want to advance, catch up with the so-called developed countries. Yeah. We have to also bring at least those down there, our pizza farmers, up. We have to catch up with those at our peers. Mm -hmm. So our work is not easy. How do we bring out those we call primitive farmers up to this level? How do we catch up, grow with those our peers in the system or in other countries? And how do we catch up with the developed country? Because we want to also grow. Mm -hmm. So we have a tough time. That is also an opportunity for us. Yeah. So these are the things we have to think through and find ways and means to solve them. Okay. Because there is a light there. There is a hope. There is money to be made. I hate talking about money, but as a businessman, I'm a social entrepreneur. Okay. You know. But if we are to talk about business, yes, it is a business. Agro-business is a big-time thing. And since we've notified, we've, we are aware of that, we should do our best to create the opportunities for us. Okay. And one, I mean, for me, what is money? Mm -hmm. Ghana here, you know what it is like. To, if you are going to have agriculture loan for, I mean, I had money at 33%. Okay. It's non-starter. Any oh. agri loan above even 3% is non-starter. So gov if governments, or go I mean, in this case, let me say governments, that will include other people, yeah. mean business, any agri loan above 3% is non-starter. They are not serious. It should be special loan after creating the, the opportunities that I'm talking about, mm -hmm. getting people, entrepreneurs who have already started themselves. Mm -hmm. How do you get them to be solid and then you get others to learn from them? How do you clean up the marketing situation for all of them? All mm -hmm. these are, the, and then you find a way to support people who want to go in again. Mm -hmm. That must be a reasonable loan because it's agreed takes a long time to mature. If it is crops of three months, fine. If it is a bear, and not our uh, coconut, which every three years with a new variety, hey, you can go with even 3% is too much. So if government want to tap into all these opportunities, they should make money aside and have strong criteria because, of course, we know our Ghanaian citizens, our, our, our mentality. People yes. will take and then they will vanish or mm -hmm. give to Uncle Wiz into other business. So we have to get a clear monitoring evaluation system to monitor. We, who can we give this loan to? He must be somebody who by his own has created something that he is doing. Okay. Can we make him grow? Yes. How much does he or she need? Yes. So, so, so you give and you come from the one you monitor that the fellow is doing it. Okay. So we need a strong system with strong monitoring evaluation. This uh, a system that monitors so that we can be consistent on wanting to achieve our objectives. Okay. Yes, empower yes, but also monitor, monitor. make sure. Them. So the challenge is yes. I, for example, if it's about me, I brought in a loan from okay. Badia. It's a bank development that is Arab. It's an Arab okay. bank, which um, I applied over one million US dollars after investing my own eight hundred thousand dollars because I wanted to set up a factory. And they, they approve the loan, but the loan has to be given to Minister of Finance and Minister of Finance to another bank in Ghana to manage it. Mm -hmm. They gave it to me at 33%. Mm -hmm. 
until we had an issue that they were about to take me to court. And in their own statement, they state, because they couldn't lie to the court, they said, we gave him at 5%. That's when I realized that the bank has cheated me over three years. <laughs> See, so yeah. if I'm in the system, that how many students, how many Ghanaians can you do that to them? The company will collapse from, from day one. Oh. 33%, even 5% was too much. The, the bank gave it to the gov to government of Ghana on interest-free loan for five years. So and the government cannot give it to me. So they gave it to a, a popular bank to be given to me. E even there, the government could have come and said, "Look, we are paying your your workmanship. Don't take any money." Okay, fair enough. They, they were supposed to take five, okay. and yet they gave it to me thirty-three. No country, nobody, not even the richest man on earth, will do agro business with thirty-three percent and make it. Even five percent. For a newcomer, for a youth, no way. So if you really want to take advantage of agriculture, as we're talking about, the government must be serious. Mm -hmm. Set aside fund that will be given to youth, minimum 3%, with strong monitoring evaluation um, policy or you know, system in place, and make sure that certain criteria is fulfilled. Has he or she contributed something? Yes or no? If not, is he or she really excited to go into that business has he or, he or she gotten some basic knowledge in poultry those conditions must be fulfilled it should not be non-partisan not mpp mdc or wpd or no but individual <laughs> this is the way forward for for me i think for the youth okay mr doza anything to add to that or oh the plenty why not <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're talking about challenges yes. challenges um, in the agribusiness um, one for where we are situated um, i mean via uh, the longitude and latitude we have lots of rain we have okay. sunshine we have wind and all these are wind for for the farmer um it's really good and we are blessed okay. as a country we are blessed you don't get these elsewhere mm -hmm. we have all these together at once and uh, i think uh, like you rightly said we need to take advantage of them but the, the the challenges in here one is by the capital is talking about you see for for me poultry for example you go in small you get small profit by going big you get big profit and these are the areas that the government has to come into see um last year or so whether last year or last two years one of them um, we imported over 600 thousand tons of chicken in the country yeah. within a thousand million and w w which translates into over six hundred million dollars okay. and that mm, was about 98 percent of what we need our chicken needs poultry needs in the country which means we produce about two, only two percent the whole country will produce only two percent yes of what we eat all the rest is from outside what 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 do we understand by that we are giving the outside poultry farmers work to do so the government needs to come in let's sit down it's a it's, it's, it's a value chain okay. we'll talk about poultry it's a value chain i mean you need somebody to be in a hatchery or you need a hatchery you need people who are brooding. You need people who will you know, raise their um, day old chicks up, up, up into growers. Yes. Then they start laying. That is if you are going into layers. Okay. And if you are going into you know, the broiler or even the cockerels, I mean, they don't get that, to that, um, that number of weeks in, on your farm before you sell them. And then you have the droppings, which is also something the government can and should invest in why do we import fertilizer for god's sake i don't understand because the npk you know seeps into the soil and infects our underground water and we are killing ourselves mm -hmm. slowly but this poultry dropping or animal droppings are excellent and people are coming to my farm to buy cheating as though they are cheating as god they come and buy one full sack 50 kg at sometimes 
uh, eight cities or even ten cities, and then um, you know either to you go buy fertilizer at over a hundred mm -hmm. Ghana uh, cities. That is not fair, and I think we are being cheated yeah. a lot. But that one is even business in itself. The poultry dropping. Yes. Somebody can go into the hatchery. Somebody can go into brooding. Somebody can. We can even talk about the feed, yes. the melon. These are all areas that we can go into, and even if you take the uh, uh, chicken dressing, you know, trying to uh, package them, and then the marketing. These are it's it's a very beautiful chain, yeah. and wherever you 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 enter, you make money. But there are challenges all over. Mm -hmm. I can assure you, the challenges in hatchery. Be a hatchery uh, um, an entrepreneur in the country, and people will not even come and buy from you because you hatch them in Ghana. Why? Because we've not been able to brand them well. The parents' stock. How many? How 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 has the government helped those in the hatchery to get good, you know, parent stocks to lay the eggs, yeah. so that we will have that interest and then believe faith in our own. Because when we don't do it here, we pick we pick from outside and we give them business. Okay. And this, I believe, is one thing. We are not doing well okay. when it comes to the feed mm -hmm. why don't we encourage and empower the farmers to plant more maize more soya mm -hmm. because the feed alone mm -hmm. takes about 70 percent of the, the business okay. feed alone takes about 70 percent of the, the poultry business so if we are buying all these from outside what do we think we are doing we are giving outsiders or i must say foreigners um, without any insult and with uh with all apologies but uh, uh, being a Ghanaian, i think we have the land we have people yeah. why is it that when uh, uh um, the, 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 the the foreigners chinese for example are coming to do some big businesses here we hear they come along with prisoners so we have prisoners who have been you know uh, incarcerated for uh, and they have to be in there for hard labor. How do you be in a room for hard labor? What are you doing in that room? Go out there helping the business, agribusiness, work hard. And it is going to give us food, real food. We have to be so yeah. sufficient before we even think about, uh, uh, you know, exporting. For example, what I'm doing without, you know, the antimicrobial drugs, it is organic anyway. Okay. I mean, that's it. If you try and then encourage me that, oh, this is very good. Why don't we export them? I laugh. My people are not eating good. You want me to, the good, small good thing I have produced, I should export it. <laughs> so what do my people eat? The, the junk. I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. And these are things I believe we should have the government to come in to help. Mm -hmm. I didn't know my own. Yes, standards, Ghana Standards Board has given me, you know, and uh, they've, 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 this. I wouldn't say they've certified, they've not certified me. Okay. And I'm not saying this because uh, I'm not supposed to advertise. But the truth is that they've checked, uh, you know, uh, research on my, 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 my poultry, okay. uh, my, my, my chicken, and they found no anti-traces of uh, antimicrobial drugs. If something like this, I mean, is supported, and I have even picked on one good man or trained him, and he's also doing it. He thought uh, that, that the chicks were going to die. Because from day one, when you buy the day old chicks, they give you a chart, long chart. Day one, give it this, yeah. uh, give it anti, uh, this antibiotics, <laughs> give it this. It is like that. Uh, and you see, it's, 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 it's amazing. When you pick any poultry drug, I get serious and uh, uh, anytime I'm talking about this, when you mm -hmm. pick any uh, um, poultry drug, it's written on it, the withdrawal date. The withdrawal date on it means that anytime you give such a drug to the, 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 the poultry or your, your chick, that thing, you know, for the number of days that you've given, you should not actually eat it. Okay. But ask me, if, if, if I, am, I have my uh, day old chicks, I've raised it to nine weeks, look at the number of uh, drugs I've given to it and ask me whether by nine, nine, ninth week, uh, it's gone out of all those withdrawal dates. It hasn't. But who will pay for it? Why should you be sitting in uh, somebody's farm to be fed? Who, nobody will pay for it. So the farmer will sell it. Mm -hmm. The farmer sells it. You will eat it. You eat it, you get infected. But 
the, 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 the anti-black rumor yeah. that it will be in your system. And when it gets tough in your system, it means any time you have an ailment, when you take any I mean, antibiotics, that is when you'll be told that your system is already you know, yeah. saturated with that particular thing. So you get a point. Mm -hmm. And the other day I was at um, a veterinary um, workshop. We had this at a veterinary um, uh, uh, school in, in, in tech, okay. here in the USA. And they were saying that now it's a war against those antimicrobial drugs. And I, I, I always meant, went mad. I said, so why are we doing this to ourselves? We know that it's, it's a war. What are we doing about it? Of course, they've started. Yeah. But I think we should, we, should, we should run at a faster rate. We are too small. If the whole country is producing only 2% yes, of yes. what we will take, me, I'm, I'm not even a drop when it comes to the ocean. That's what I, I think. And then I don't think poultry, for example, is one business that in it, when you enter, you know, everybody is ready to help you mm -hmm. for information. Don't do this, do it this way. You have this problem. There, there are lots of people who want to volunteer yeah. information. It's there. So it's one advantage there. Okay. But, you know, of course, there are people who think they are competing. Mm -hmm. When you ask me who are my competitors, I will tell you that those even around me are my complementers. They, they, we can't compete because how many can I produce? The people who want, they will not get all from me <laughs> anyway. So you are not competing with me. Yeah. So I think these are areas that we need to be encouraged. The government needs to get us feed, my God. Let the feed flow. And there are workers who will work. I'm telling you, there are lots of farmers who cannot produce and they are out of business because they cannot buy feed. What are we doing to ourselves as a country? And these are things that I think we need to look at. It's, it's, it's a big challenge. Yeah. It's a big challenge in any farming business. You can't buy feed so the okay. cost of chicken is, you know, skyrocketing yeah. like that. I mean, you buy feed, and then by the next time that you do your calculation, you go there. When you wanted to buy 10 bucks, now you cannot buy 10 bucks with the same money. You have yeah. to buy 6 bucks. Why? And then that will reduce the number of days you feed. So it's, yes. it's, it's, a, it's, it's really, I mean, a challenge. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I'm sure it's a big challenge. To me, it's not. Okay. okay. If we do not know the way forward or do not have solutions, then we say it's a big challenge. Now, I know we are in the youth avenue, I'll come to that. Yes. But now, looking at the poultry, he's doing organic. Okay. If this guy is encouraged, and we have about 100 of his type, he can sell his produce to the oil companies three or four times the price he sells in Ghana here. Mm -hmm. That in itself alone. Get it certified as organic. These guys have done money. They want to buy the best of the best. Mm -hmm and he can sell his produce three, four times the price he's selling it. Yeah. That's a market, mm -hmm. huge market. And he's not even going to be half percent of what they need. So what are we talking about? It boils down to we knowing what we need, what we must do. Okay. Now back to the youth avenue, mm -hmm. we're talking about the youth. Yes. So this is a market avenue. We know other food produce. We know vegetables. We know that gari is becoming very important. Yeah. We know oil power. Everything that we can produce has a value that we, the world needs. So what next? It is not a big deal for this government to say, look, I'm setting aside $3 billion or even $5 billion between now and five years for agriculture interest-free. You put your money where your, your, your money. So $5 billion World Bank, wherever it's coming from, and said this is for agriculture the next five years, and let's see results. But the one, the little that we even get from foreigners as donors, we chop that. I mean, you always like using the word chop because it's really brutal. Yes. You know, even the little we get to support ourselves, we still spend that on yeah. certain. But the government needs to put up a five billion dollars and say, look, this the next five years. All the value chain we want to, you see, we're not going to get the country money back in three years. So, five billion dollars, and we'll see the results. Okay. We'll see. Let's take MC, MC, is it MCA or um, the, the DCEs, and um, 
get about 50, 50 acres of land, give to 10 kids, 10 youth, and then get the market for whatever they are going to produce. And then say, look, I get 2% from whatever you produce for the money I put in. For the next five years, what will happen? Basic calculation. You get your money back. But they rather chop that money and then go begging. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make any sense. So the solutions are with us. We should be very honest and find out what we must do, do it and be consistent, be committed to that and we'll achieve results. So then how do we get the youth, how do we um, encourage the youth who have already probably started something like something in agribusiness, okay? How do we encourage them to stay motivated and focused in the business? Is already bad. So if we want if you want to correct it, the see the kids are no more interested. Last they say in tree. Uh, Achia, but and then um, mm -hmm. we. So okay. we should get our elders, our leaders to think, come back home, think back home and okay. say, look, this is where we are. It's critical. If we don't, do we have the opportunities? If we don't take care, it's going to get out of hand. Yeah. That I'm afraid of. Like the guarantees on our water bodies, like we have water land. I mean, if we don't really take action, do we have the opportunities to tap into the trillion dollar business of agro of agriculture yeah. if you don't take it we we'll mess up and we we'll, we'll lose everything mm -hmm. so it's back again the current situation we have is in the hands of the government to make sure that we make agriculture attractive knowing very well that it has a future yeah. one of the this, things sorry but the okay. one of the things we can also do to attract them i was talking about branding yeah branding you know so if you have beautiful girls like you mm -hmm. with a whole Mm -hmm. Or oh, standing by as uh, one coconut, you know, trying to see how this thing, you know, I mean, and it is a billboard somewhere. One looks at it and says, hey, this video goes into farming, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of, it's, 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 people will have to grow into something. When you go to class, like you're saying, uh, they re what, when you grow up, what will you do? Don't I try. want to see people <laughs> shooting up their hands to say, I want to be a farmer. But nobody, I'm, I'm telling you, go to any class and ask, nobody will say, I want to be a farmer. <laughs> yeah. The idea with a beautiful girl must fit in, into the overall plan, the system that the government has put mm. in place. Yeah, okay. that's just an example so, I gave. So but why the is branding. she doing that? Wow. Oh, yeah, what to you? If you go, you get this and you can mm -hmm. do this. Oh, okay, then. You see, there must be something that is, you know, pulling us there. Yes, beautiful girl, um, but she's doing what? That's what she's doing. It fits in it what it is. Oh, okay. That is the system must be well established. Yes. But it must be consciously well established. And in this case, unfortunately the government, because that is where unfortunately. Still discussing youth in agri business. So, um, Ambassador, let me come to you on this. Right now, um, we need more youth to get into the agribusiness sector. But the support we are not really seeing top. So what do you suggest we do? The support, I mean, what, what kind of support? Are you the support, um, probably, um, how should I put this? The support that the youth need in, in getting into the business itself. Probably have the idea, the money and stuff. Right now, they say we shouldn't talk about the money as a capital, the capital we need to start a business. They say it's not really the capital we need to start. So now we have the idea down. And so let me say, what are some of the sectors, the areas, or the people who are already into these businesses that we can associate ourselves with? You see, the, the, the youth being encouraged, um, I don't think, but you see, the government is big. Yes. The government being big, can come up with policies, huge policies, to encourage the youth. Mm -hmm. It is not about just slogans, youth in this. It's not about slogans. It's about the thing happening. Okay. However, if I hold a little brief for the government, I will say that we have very affluent people, not men alone, but some women. Mm -hmm. People have money who can also sit down. Now, the youth need to come up with plans, good plans, mm -hmm. workable plans, put it down, sit down with people. 
I mean, people are, I mean, pitching, investors are coming in yeah. to look at all these things. Come up with programs. You see, you, you've gone to school, you've gathered this knowledge, whether in IT, whether in engineering or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now we are saying that, see, you can't stand up one day and say you are going to build a bridge. You are an engineer, yes, we know. But we don't need bridges all day and we don't have that kind of money to build all the bridges that you've learned in yeah. school. So come up with plans. How are you going to do the small farming, an acre of land, yeah. planting maize, intercropping them with some, you know, pepper, blah, 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 you know, doing the drip watering here and there. And this is what you're going to come up with. Maybe 10 bags of maize per acre. <laughs> you're going to make so much, you know, kilograms of uh, pepper, chili or, uh, or the bell pepper within this number of months. Everybody sits down and opens the mouth. The other day somebody was asking me that, oh, uh, how, how can I uh, come into it? I said, okay, how many do you want to say? So oh, like just about a thousand beds. I said, okay, so now let's just average everything. Thousand beds at their peak, they are going to eat uh, like uh, uh, two and a half bags of 50 kilograms a day. Okay. And if one bag is costing 300 uh, 50 Ghana cities on the average. I mean, let's look at the day. So, in a day, it's about a thousand yeah. Ghana cities. Thousand cities a day for one month is 30,000. That is what you need. Now, if you start with the day old check, to the point of lay, you need about 24 weeks. Let's have very good beds and say plus or minus 18 weeks. Yeah. 18 weeks times seven. You can do the math. Yes. And then you are needing 1,000 Ghana cities a day. Just pushing it in there. Pushing it. And that's just feed. You have not come to labor. You have not come to um, medicines. Uh, if it's with me, my additives, my cereals, um, you know, my um, spices and my leaves and all those things. We've not come to uh, we've not come to water, we've not come to you know the utilities because you need light and all those things. You've not come to the, yeah. that point. Now this is the kind of money you need to the point of labor. When they start laying you make good money because if you have very good birds and they start giving you at least 90 percent of production yeah. and you are selling your eggs at even 40 cities Crates. Ninety percent of eggs means nine hundred eggs a day. Nine hundred eggs a day, translating into crates means thirty crates a day. Thirty crates a day at forty cities, four, three, twelve. That's how many? Is it thousand two or you know twelve thousand or whatever? Yeah. You do the math. At the end of the day, you realize that it is very lucrative. But sit down, learn, because look, your chicks can also die. That is why people think the poultry business is very risky. I would say it's not risky because if we are, I'm coming from ECMA, if you have a municipal yes. assembly, I mean, and, municipal, and then the area, all the poultry farmers association, I mean, I'm the, the okay. chairman. See, we have over 180 uh, poultry farmers there. And if bird flu came, and okay. uh, just about 10 of us had bird flu, would you say it is risky? 10 out of 180. Mm -hmm. Yes, my birds died. I, I, I lost almost 3,000 uh, birds. Yes, but I wouldn't say the industry is that risky. Mm -hmm. You understand? And these are things we could, you know, prevent. So all these preventive measures going along your biosecurity, here and there were very well. You'll be able to save the day. Mm -hmm. So if you do all these things well, you will make the profit. It's there. So let us encourage the youth, yes. Let us have those who are affluent in the, in the society to partner with them. Let's go out and you'll be ready to invest. You see, we should, we should position ourselves that we are ready to invest. That will even attract the youth because they are hungry. Yeah. They, are hung, they want to work. And all money, I mean, say, oh, you can find a car, car, so if fancy is allowed. Oh, it's allowed. Skibia is school. Skibia is actual bank of Ghana. Mm -hmm. yeah. So whether I sold um, um, chicken droppings, uh, at the end of the day, we have money, money, the bank of Ghana on it, you yeah. see. So if we can attract them, 
into the industry, agribusiness. Yes. That is good. We should attract them. They are hungry. Some of them are just looking for money or whatever everywhere. everywhere. So when they see that the, the attraction is there, they will Definitely. sit down and then start thinking. Thank you. Then we should also have people who would have prepared the grounds. People have solid documents ready to help the youth. Yeah. And all these can be you know, powered by the government, as you were saying. Yeah. And when we are able to do this very well, in fact, the industry will boom so much that we will we'll be self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. And when we are self-sufficient, then we can export. Okay. When we export, the country is going to make lots of money. As for the challenges, they will be there. But problems, there will be. Solutions, there must be. Okay. Mm. Once you are in it, you get the experience, you, you have enough, and you can sell. So, how do you sell if you don't have enough? Mm -hmm. So, the, at our back, and the government must say, how do we ensure self sufficiency, yes. full security for our, our citizens? Then it will be easier for the government to put a certain amount of money to uh, operate, to open the doors for the youth. People like this need to be supported. You see, there should be policies all over. It's not just working. So that if a young guy comes, whether he's coming or she's coming from a rich family, wants to open a poultry, there must be a certificate or something that shows that he or she has practiced three or four months okay. from a qualified or already existing poultry farmer okay. to, so that he can even go to the register general to open a company. I have learned some from somewhere about three to six months minimum. All this must be well regulated so the business will be sweet. Yeah. It, I mean, that's the word. Somebody will say it must be sexy. That's, you see, we must be moving that. Yeah. We must be using our brains and get somewhere. Okay. Waste alone will not help us. Okay. It's sad because they are the future. Yeah, we are. And we have to think with them. Please touch briefly on um, how um, innovation and technology is influencing the agribusiness. A lot. A lot. But we first have to be in again. Mm -hmm. We have to be in. Like he said, all those, um, he was make, making mention of the, the poultry feed, yes. the, um, the way, like in my place, I'm doing what we call climate smart agriculture. In about area of 300 acres, I have three big dams. One is about two bit a football field. Okay. So I can I can do maize throughout the year, whether it rains or not. Of course I will need a rain to refill mm -hmm. the dam. You see, so that is something and we have a lot of water bodies. Look, Pra is just here. In a very primitive way, if we're to use even one back hole that we are the machines that we are using for all this galamse, just one back hole to make so, something simple like gutter. You can make a gutter from Praso to somewhere Mampo or anywhere within the water area to supply water, true or false. This is part of technology. We don't have to use the best, the absolute um, latest technology, but we should start somewhere. Very primitive and we'll get something. Okay. So technology, yes. I have an ICT center for farmers. I'm educating farmers not only to use phones calling relatives, but to use phones to to see the weather, the yes. trends of the weather, and market avenues where they can also sell their, 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 their produce and all that. You see, it is. We should, you see, we are lucky that we don't have to go through what others went through before getting where they are. We just can tap in into it and then do even better than them. So technology, yes, we need a lot. The advantage that we, will not, we don't have to suffer like the way others went through to be where they are now. We just have to tap in and make very good use of it. Okay. I think we would, ha we would have to um, host you to here again to continue this discussion because, I mean, yes, there's a lot to learn from you. But before we go, um, Ambassador, what advice would you give to the youth out there? And also anything you have to say to the government at this point? 
the youth will have to take it slow. Okay. The youth will have to understand that yes, there's money out there. I know. But don't start today and we want to be Bill Gates today. Yeah. It won't happen. Take it slow. One day at a time. I drink one 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 summer, what we one one. So you start one day at a time. Pick it slowly. That is one. Two. Come in with honesty. You've got to be honest. No kindness. Don't cut the kindness. Do it well. Do it properly. When you get to a farm, the other day my friend was telling me that he just installed CCTV around a guy he has been working with for over 10 years was caught on camera selling five fowls and pocketing the money. Just one day, five fowls. So all along, if he's even been selling five fowls a week, do you, do you understand what you have done? It's serious. So you go in, you start stealing. Don't forget that because you also did that, you will also receive the same punishment. It's not good. Be honest to yourself. Be honest to whoever you are learning from. And then come in with a clear mind. Make it fertile and you can receive. Be receptive to all the good things. Okay. And I'm telling you that it will work. As for the government, we we'll always beg, support us. I don't think we can ban poultry uh, products being imported one day. We cannot meet it. But let's prepare the ground. Let's prepare the ground. Give us the feed. Give us the uh, DO chicks. And then I, I believe we'll be able to produce. And when we are able to produce to some point, you can now slow down the importation. And I believe we will get all the money that we want. Thank and let us also you. develop good tastes for our local production. Products. See, if you eat from Dosa and Dosa farms, our chicken, mm -hmm. you will be tasting real chicken okay. and not what we take from elsewhere. When you go to parties, what we <laughs> eat, it's our mind which tells us that we are taking chicken, but it's not the tongue. Yeah. You've got to taste good chicken. Okay. And that is Dosa and Dosa farms. Thank you very much. Mr. Isa, any advice? Yeah, I mean, it goes back to the, the government. Mm -hmm. um, like the advice is said, uh, we have to be able to criticize ourselves. We have to be able to tease ourselves and so that we can you know, come out with the truth or do the right thing. Yeah. Uh, if you have government ministers who are refusing to encourage the youth to go into agriculture or to encourage people like this to do what they are doing better and more because they are interested in bringing cheap fowls and all that, making money themselves, we get nowhere. So these are the things we have to come out with critical, we should be critical of ourselves and strong punishment. Any minister caught importing something that is not in his life before must be punished, severely punished. We can only get out of our current situations when we have strong policies that we are consistent and punishing people, calling them to task. And stop thinking that if you don't do it, you are not smart. And then of course, we're not getting it. So we should be very honest, committed, and consistent in what we want, and then we get to it. Because we have other details. If you're sitting here, you want to go to the market circle, mm -hmm. what are the chances to be there? Bicycle, by, uh, by taxi, yeah. walk, or this. But if you sit here, I want to go to market circle, you're not making a move. I did no, <laughs> That is very good. Thank you very much. Things. Thank you very much. That was Mr. Isa Wajuago founder and chairman of B. Bovid Group of Companies. Yes, thank you so much, sir, for joining us here for the Youth Avenue. And also, Ambassador Kojo Dosa. Kofi. Kofi, sorry, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ambassador Kofi Dosa of Dosa and Dosa Farms. Thank you so much for educating us on agribusiness. There is money in agribusiness. It's not only about we sitting in the offices or anything like that. Let's get on the food, youth. There is more for us. This is the Youth Avenue with your gorgeous host, Kukwa Asanuba. And we've come to the end of the day. We'll continue our discussion same time next week. 
Thank you so much. The program was sponsored by the Center for Volunteerism and Social Transformation, SENVAST. And so for all your individual or voluntary activities, you can contact SENVAST at info at senvast.org. Yes. Thank you so much for staying with us. Till next time, goodbye. Watch TV, promoting sustainable development.